Hi, do you sometimes feel lost in your life? Or maybe you're just looking at your life experiences and you can't quite make sense. You get triggered by other people. You see certain challenges in your life and you just really can't understand why you do the things you do and how can you change that? Or hold on, maybe you just assumed that relationships are just between people, like your friends, romance, family. Hi, my name is Coach Ted, and I am a neurotransformational coach and the founder of learningpretzel.com. And in this episode with my dear friend, Miriam, we're going to dive into the subject of relationships and how can we explore and improve relationships with ourselves. Miriam, why didn't you say hello to everyone? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Ted. It's such fun talking to you every time. My name is Miriam Boldewijn. I'm the author of Caregiver 2.0, From Burnout to Powerhouse, founder of MiriamBoldewijn.com, and the coach of the six-week online course, Caregiver 2.0. Whoop, whoop. and welcome everybody who's tuning in whether you're watching us or listening to us this is episode number four of the home of growth and today we're gonna dive into the subject of relationships and i think that it wouldn't be wise to start without clearing this assumption right that so many of us tend to jump into an assumption that relationship is with a human but the truth is that relationship is how we relate to something how we connect to it like what's the connection line there right and yes absolutely we have relationships with humans and there's a blood relations with your family or you know there's just like an emotional relationships and all forms of different relationships with people but there are also ways how we relate to our issues to parts of our history to some of our memories, to people, to experiences, to particular triggers. And it's important to highlight that how we relate to other things outside of us, whether it's people or whether it's experiences outside of us or inside of us, is directly impacting how we show up in life. Would you agree, Mariam? Yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, Ted, tell me, how do we create relationships? Mm, this is such a good question. I love that. And I'm sure that if it's landing for you guys, if you're tuning in, you're watching us, listening to us, please make sure that you pop a comment and let us know whatever it is that resonates with you and whether some of those things are really landing for you. We love to hear from you. And as always, we want to make sure that this is a dialogue, not a monologue. So we invite you to reach out and connect. And coming back to your great question, how do we create relationships? I think it's really important to look at how we learn, right? Mm -hmm. On the contrary to a popular popular belief that we learn in a cognitive way, that we basically replicate behaviors, it is really important to, to break this down, that we actually learn emotionally much more powerfully than we learn through replication of a behavior. So let me put that in a context. If you are a young child, right? And whether you are um, kind of like a very, very young child or whether you're an early teenager or maybe even an early adolescent, Mm -hmm. the way we learn from our peers, from our family, from our guardians, from all of the people that have an influence and established position of authority in our life, we tune into their emotional relationship without being able to intellectually comprehend that. Yeah, And I'm sure that you can recall some form of an experiences where you ask somebody, hey, uh, 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 how is this happening? Like, how are you feeling? Right. And they tell they told you one thing, but you could connect to a very different emotion underneath. Yeah. Can you collect yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So as children, for example, right, like our parents don't want to worry us. So they said like, oh, no, don't worry. That's nothing. Right. But Mm -hmm. how many times have you heard nothing and deep down inside emotionally, you knew that was something underneath there. Right. Mm -hmm. 
so it's important to understand that this is how we learn a lot of our stuff. And it doesn't matter what we tell ourselves. It doesn't matter what behaviors we try to replicate, especially if there is a challenging relationship and emotion inside of us. It's going to be very difficult to kind of like, you know, replicate anything different. And it's really, really important because very often we have a difficulty with, you know, like we have difficult relationships with us having an experience of something like an emotion or resistance or fear Mm -hmm. and things like that so we judge this experience but what we don't realize is that a lot of those experiences are actually experiences and emotional relationships we have to something that have been donated in us from Uh other people right? So we learn them from our peers, we learn them from our family members, we learn them from community members and all of that. And that's how we acquired them. You know that a lot of things were modeled to you by adults in your life, right? People of some form of influence and authority. So without fully realizing it, and without fully being conscious of it, we try to replicate that. And I think that it's really important to approach that with a compassion that not everything we do and not every relationship we do, we have in our life is actually um, a relationship that we have created because some of them have been modeled for us. Some of them have been, you know, donated to us and taught us by our peers, by our elders. And as we said earlier, and I think that the most important thing is to understand that a lot of relationships really run in our subconsciousness, right? It's on an unconscious level that we operate within them. So, so yeah. sorry to interrupt you, Ted. You mentioned the word unconsciousness. Mm-hmm. How would you explain it for those of uh, people in our audience who are like, oh my gosh, what is that talking about? What is unconsciousness? Mm. How would you I love that. that. Thank you so much for, thank you for so much, Miriam, for pointing it out because, yeah, I remember when I, when I was trying to familiarize myself with this unconscious and consciousness, and I was trying to discern like what's what and how does that actually work? It's so important to discern that. And thank you so much for bringing my attention to it. So before I answer this question, I will say this. The reason why I said unconsciousness is because until we get until we bring those relationships into our consciousness, there's very little we can do. But Mm. what does that really mean? Bring them from unconsciousness to consciousness, right? So let me put it this way. You know, when you have a judgment Uh about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll go with an example about myself, right? For many years, I believed that I was undereducated. It doesn't Mm. matter the fact that I have nine diplomas, I have (laughs) degrees and all of those things. It really didn't matter. I was completely convinced that I was undereducated. So here's the thing. Your conscious mind says it, Uh and conscious mind is the one that hears it and feels pain. That is the easiest way that I can explain unconsciousness is part of us that is very much alive and very much functioning and very much influential in our life, Mm -hmm. but we're just not aware of it. And the reason why unconsciousness and subconsciousness exists is because when we go through life, right? And we learn new things, You know how exhausting it is to pay conscious attention to things, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So our brain is all about preserving our energy. And one of ways to preserve energy is to automate what we do, automate some processes so we don't require a conscious attention when we do them. Yeah. So it it creates an unconscious level where a lot of our deep beliefs, a lot of our deep thoughts that have been created over a period of time, that have been repeated into so many times that they operate on an automation, 
are there so we don't pay conscious attention to it for example walking when you need to go to the toilet you don't go like hold on is that my bladder is this this is this that Mm -hmm. that, right so you just kind of like you you don't really go through this you just get up and walk and unless you have obstacles in your way then it comes into your consciousness because you go like hold on how do I get about that yeah unless you're going through a this yeah. is so interesting, but I do have another question for you. Sure. Dad, because for a long time, I wasn't aware of relationships. Mm-hmm. So how do we recognize relationships? And this is such a great question again, Mary. Yeah, I, so I, and I'm glad it took that me a long time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so glad that we're going to dive into it because you see, when when we when we are aware of the fact that a lot of the relationships that we have are based on thoughts and emotions and all of the things which is in our consciousness right recognizing them is incredibly incredibly important but how do you recognize the relationships is an incredibly important question so one of the things that we do is when you recognize that there is a strong emotion in response to something right Mm. whenever you feel strongly triggered by an experience that usually indicates that there's some form of a connection or a way or conditioned way how we relate to it yeah and i know that this concept is quite strong so just bear with me if you are afraid of something then you are experiencing fear but that fear can be based upon the relationship you have with something so is it a lack of safety in general or is it a relationship that you have developed over a period of time with a particular Mm -hmm. thing most common thing is failure and I love and I'd love to talk about that because I think that this is something that's incredibly present to many people and especially to a lot of our audience when we fear failure it's usually because all of the relationships and the emotional relationship we have with the concept and the perception of failure because what failure really is is you know, an unsuccessful accomplishment, right? That's mm-hmm. what we describe. Yeah. As, okay, you failed, you didn't succeed. So it's opposite of success, right? But then depends from one person to another, right? Which is exactly why we very often invite people to work w- one-on-one with us because what the, re- the way I perceive failure can be different than you and we can have common points, but it's going to have a different triggers for either of us, right? Yeah. And the reason why one-on-one work is very important is because then it gives you allowed to, then it allows you to create like a tailored plan that kind of like goes and dives. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. And to make the most sense, because it's a challenging concept to explain, but if I was to, if I was to really look into explaining like what is a relationship with a failure, right? Like if you have, all of this programming that when you don't succeed, right? And whether you call it failure or not, because we can have different definitions as well of things. But if you have, for example, an attachment that a failure is a disappointment, right? Yeah. It's it's something that you have from your past that whenever you failed, you were ostracized, you were criticized, Mm -hmm. you've heard that you were useless, you've heard that it was a lot of different things you have a relationship with failure yeah. because through what was said to you, through the way you define it, through the way you feel, through all of those things, they all impact how we relate to the Mm -hmm. And that is the relationship. That's the relationship with, for example, with failure. So if you are feeling upset, if you're disappointed, if you're scared, if you're, you know, if you have all of those experiences, how you relate to that experience is the relationship. And very often it's not the experience itself that's problematic for us. It's how we relate to that. 
Yeah. This is exactly how we're coming over to the subject of the relationships, right? And yeah. one of the one of the most important things is to really recognize that you have a relationship to something, right? And ask yourself, what am I, what am I experiencing? And what is, what is it bringing into my attention? So if you are feeling unsettled with something, right? For example, for me, there was a period of time in my life where I felt really lost I felt very unhappy. I was sad. And I was also, I was also blaming everyone around me for what was happening in my life. Mm. Because if you peeped me off, I blamed you. Yeah. But then the problem was that whenever I went into looking for solutions, right? Because I wanted to fix it. But whenever I went into the solution, it just directed it towards me. And then suddenly I came into facing, you know, the wall of resistance, right? The famous follow wall of resistance when we look, when we do the personal development work, right? It's like, hands up if you can, re if you can relate <laughs> to that, right? If you feel that there's a resistance when you're diving into the concept of, you know, of personal development, what it usually means is that we just don't want to admit the things that show us in a negative light. Yeah. Right. I, it's so relatable, Ted, because you mentioned some things, blaming other people. You know, when I burned out, I was lost. I didn't mm. know what to do. I didn't know how to look at myself. I didn't know, you know, how to stop blaming others for what was happening, for my feelings, for my emotions, and you know, so and... Huge. Now that we're talking about this, that when people, many people, when many people hear the word relationships or re relationship, they rarely think about the relationship with themselves. Mm. One of the things that I think it's important to acknowledge in this is when we try to recognize a relationship, right, which is outside, which, which is not connected, sorry, which is not connected with the outside world. It's not down with the person. It's not down with the experience. It's inside of you. It's how you relate to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crucial when you're trying to, you know, explore those relationships to really dive into it and see that you have needs. Yeah and recognize what those needs are what the expectations are and i think even it's, it's beyond anything else is recognize that only you can truly fulfill them yeah yeah right? i it, it, you know this is so true so ted can i tell the audience how i did it how i started <clears throat> to work yeah. on my relationship with Miriam. Absolutely. And I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you actually, you know, because one of the things that, one of the things that I know was the hardest for me was mm -hmm. acknowledge that relationship because it was negative, right? But then once I, once I've, you know, really worked through the wall of the resistance to admit that I have a relationship and it's challenging and it shows me in a negative light because I didn't want to take a responsibility, you know, for fulfilling those things and I was uh -huh. placing that responsibility on everybody else. So if, you know, if you were my partner, I expected you to make me happy, right? And I know that yeah. today a lot of people know that, you know, nobody from outside of you can do that, but it's still really difficult to explore it. And a lot of people, I think, are afraid to speak about it. Yeah. So one of the things that I know, we were, we were talking about it as well in in preparation right was that you know really understanding recognizing a relationship right and recognizing that inside of that relationship you have needs that mm -hmm. only you can fulfill and then on the other side that whenever you try to do that and whenever you're diving on any personal development or growth or any sort of a process that involves change it's so important to look at it in a retrospective. 
of yeah. where you've been and not to compare yourself to other people, but to Ooh. who you have been earlier on, on this journey, because comparison by itself has no harm. It's just how we abuse ourselves with the results that come out from this comparison. So with this in mind, what was really important in your journey to really dive into those relationships? What would you say, Miriam, were the key factors of how you dealt with it? So, first of all, this was, it wasn't easy, mm -hmm. right? Sure. I really had to work hard on this. I didn't look at myself with curious compassion that. Mm. And, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm getting goosebumps. I didn't look at myself with curious compassion. You know, and it was not easy for me to do a simple thing like just hugging myself. You mentioned earlier that... Um, some of us say my, my, my partner or my loved one should make me happy. He should hug me and, you know, show me love. No, why don't you hug yourself every now and then? Show compassion. And I, want to, and I just want to interrupt. I just want to interrupt for a second because I think it's really important to say that in here. You know, what we're trying to say in here is by fulfilling our own needs is not to say that support network and those who are those people who are meaningful to us can't support us on the way. What we're mm -hmm. trying to say is that no one will ever be able to fulfill your needs. They can enhance the fulfillment but they can't fulfill that for you. And sometimes, yes, when we feel like, you know, it's challenging, that hug can be really, really, you know, beneficial to us. But what really happens is that through that, we channel their energy to fill, yes. fill that ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. So and one other thing that uh, I had to work on was evaluate my you know, different areas in my life, like um, my health, yeah. spiritually, my emotions, even my time, mm. even my time, you know, so it was hard work uh, uh, for me, Ted, but just like you, it's an ongoing process. Right. It's an ongoing process. Mm. so and because I worked hard on myself you know that I am grateful for many things I have a I, question I have a question for you though because gratitude is something that comes from a perspective of time right we can only truly see the lessons and be grateful for them on the other side of the experience, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that for me, recognizing the relationships and working through the relationships was also a process. And not every single relationship that I was working on was difficult, but there were mm -hmm. some that were really much harder because they involved some other things to, you know, to process through. And it was really challenging because when I was going through them until I really got a little bit of a guidance you know because some of the relationships we can just run wild with them and we can really just you know go through them instinctually because yeah. let's not forget that there's a bank of a natural wisdom inside of us that very often can guide us through this process yeah and at the same time some of us might need a little bit more assistance so if some of you guys have been trying to work on the relationships with yourself and you feel like you're keep getting, you know, back into the square one or that you're just not able to create those results, I really invite you to reach out to, to either of us and we, we would love to talk to you. Um, but Miriam, I'm really curious. Mm -hmm. When we look at it, that the process of working on a relationship is an ongoing process, right? But on the other side of every step, there's always something 
that can be only seen from a retrospection, from retrospective pers perspective, right? So what were some of the things that you have identified that as you worked through the relationships, you were able to experience on the other side? So one of the things I worked on was forgive myself, forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm, Miriam right. had to forgive herself for blaming other people mm. of how she was feeling. Miriam had to forgive herself for not practicing self-care and not taking mm -hmm. good care of her own temple That's and to her health. It was hard. It was hard. Miriam had to be mindful. Mm. Pay attention that she was not too busy. And if she was doing some breathing exercises and then she had to forgive herself again. Right, right. And would you say then that the gratitude came, came after that or before yes. that? I, the gratitude came after that. I was thankful for forgiving myself. And, and one question, more... Sorry. one question. No, you're okay. Uh, did you know that would happen on the other side when you started this journey? No, I didn't know, but I was curious. Yeah. You know, there was a time in my life when I burned out that, you mm. know, right? Right, I know, I know, yeah. And yeah. I knew there was light at the end of the tunnel, but it was so difficult. We have talked about this in our earlier episodes. So if you haven't watched it, I recommend that you watch that episode. So even though I know, I knew, sorry, but I didn't know what the result would be. Yeah. And I think it's so powerful. It's so powerful to acknowledge that, that, you know, things will manifest in your life in different mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're able to identify really where they will lead us. But a lot of the times, we just don't know what's going to be the outcome. And what's your story and your journey is going to be different than anyone else because you are unique. There's going to be a lot of similarities between us, but there's also so much of a uniqueness how we've created things, how we've acquired, who donated them to us, how did we learn them, how did we repeat, what cycles did we break, what did we not break? So Miriam, as we wrap this episode and we look into relationships as much as with other people mm -hmm. and ourselves, if you were to share one perspective or some wisdom with our listeners and our viewers, what would you, what would you share with them? You know, that we have talked about how hard it can be, you know, but you can get there. Try to meet yourself where you're at and start. Start where you are. And we haven't talked about habits, but if your plan is to try new habits, mm -hmm. right? Make sure that you try one or two new habits. Make it manage manageable for you. Mm. And improve the relationship with yourself. Yeah, I think that this is a very good point. We might do another episode just specifically about creating habits and managing mm -hmm. habits because it's really important and I think there's so much to it. But just to wrap this episode about the relationships, what I would like to share with all of you is this. The world you're experiencing 
is very often a reflection of you. It works like a mirror. And why would anybody look into working on the relationships, deep, uncomfortable sometimes relationship with ourselves? It's because when we start working on ourselves, we don't need other people to change. We're just able to create boundaries and we're able to show up inside of those relationships with other people and with ourselves inside of the situations and create a change through that. You really don't need to control the world around you. And that was one of the most relieving part that came from me through my transformational process. That as I was willing to work on myself and stop trying to control everyone around me, this is where I was able to show up in integrity with myself, experiencing peace, experiencing calmness. It doesn't mean that I was never nervous again. I was very much. But when I started working on myself, suddenly all of my relationships and all of the relationships with situations, with challenges, with history, with other people started to improve. Mm. So with that in mind, we want to thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking your time and tuning in with us. And we already look forward to another next episode of Home of Growth, where, well, I suppose you have to follow us up and subscribe to the channel to find out what's going to be the subject of the next episode. Thank you so much. Look after yourself and be kind to one another. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.